Ten to nine, you've been talking about fasting this morning as thousands of Nottinghamshire Muslims start to observe Ramadan. You've been hearing what it's like to go without food, hearing from some pupils at Nottinghamshire schools, from uh, a teacher at the Nottingham Academy talking about uh, how they're faring at exams time whilst they're not eating. Well, um, here at BBC Radio Nottingham, Jürgen Proudlove is a fitness and nutrition expert from Mapley. Hello, morning to you. Hello, morning. So tell me a little bit about what fasting would do to your body. Um... Well, first of all, obviously, you go without food. So there are some health benefits uh, if you do intermittent fasting. And it's very uh, personal. Um, obviously, fast, people understand fasting if it's just pushing one hour uh, longer until you eat or going um, for much longer. But the health benefits, if you do it for health and you do it properly with water, with hydration, it actually increases your longevity. It gives a break to your liver to do all the other functions that liver has to do, apart from processing the food. So that's the main yeah. help. See, benefit. I was interested in what you said there. So what you're saying is even pushing the time that you would eat a meal by an hour, you could consider that as, as part of part fasting. Yes, it is a fasting, yes. Any, any amount of time you go without food is fasting, really. So overnight, if you have your last dinner, um, your last meal at 6 o'clock, and then you don't eat until eight o'clock in the morning. That's fasting, and that's a few hours of fasting. Mm. What about a few days of fasting? <laughs> I think that's... you have to have a really good reason to do that. <laughs> but as we've heard, people have. You know, there was somebody who early on went 72 hours without food. She was raising money. It was a sponsorship thing for Guide Dogs for the Blind, she said. And that's fantastic. As long, I think, in my opinion, as long as it's done in, in a sensible manner and uh, consciously, so with water... Yes. I mean, I can't really comment on, on religious fasting because they do it for different reasons. They but do. But I'm talking purely for and health reasons. And, of course, water isn't included in the daytime fast that Absolutely. Muslims are going through at the moment with uh, with Ramadan. So why is water important when you're not eating? Because our cells can't function without water. Our brain doesn't function very well without water. I mean, our body is like 70% even more made of uh, fluid. So water is, is one of those things you can go without food for many days without water not for very long uh, and of course there is a sort of fast that's included in quite a number of diets so the big fatty diet of a couple of years ago was that five two thing wasn't it where you eat normally for five days and then for two days you fast um although fasting was 500 calories so that kind of thing can be good for you can it yes and i wouldn't call it fatty either it's it's <laughs> it's just um amount of calories is restricted on certain days and the fact is and that's a um, you know, proven fact that nowadays people eat far too many calories. So restricting calories in whatever manner you do, whether it's a time-limiting uh, fasting, so you, you start eating later and you finish eating um, earlier, or whether you do on, on alternating days, I think it's very good, yeah. yes. As long as it's done in an sensible manner. And I suppose some people are, are going to find fasting easier than others because we now know that Sarah can't fast to save a life. So she's on a she's on a fast for, for I mean, admittedly, in her youth, for school to raise money and goes and has a McDonald's milkshake. That's Which is not, a drink. That's a, well, it's a drink um, I, I, with I, I, 500 calories in I it. I wouldn't call that sensible. No, no. Oh dear. This is no. my porridge bowl as well. So I, I eat during the show, well... Before the show, during the show, after and the show, I can't. I, I to can't. help the people of Syria, Sarah decided to fast and couldn't last until lunchtime. It's to do, I think, with their um, mental toughness. Right. <laughs> I remember very, very, very well my first. It wasn't even fast. I was asked to do. Uh, I wanted to do a fasting blood sugar test, and uh, my appointment was ten o'clock. And I always was before that breakfast person and I thought how I'm going to do it I can't eat till at least half past ten and I was dreading it and after I've done it I thought actually I wasn't that bad but because mentally I was prepared for it I can't just eat until half past ten you just have to accept it weak willed that's me thank you Jürgen I've been thoroughly told uh, BBC Radio Nottingham's Hayley Compton is uh, rather